Good morning to one and all. I'm Dr. Priyanka and today we are going to uh, discuss uh, dye systems and materials. Okay, coming to the learning outcomes. Uh, so first we'll have to define the dye. Uh, outline the dye materials and selection criteria and compare various dye systems and provide advantages, disadvantages, indications for each category. Okay. So starting with the definition, uh, <clears throat> starting with the working class definition. Okay. So the whole thing is known as a working cast, okay? And the individual pieces that we cut are known as dye, okay? <clears throat> so working dye is the replica of a prepared teeth, rich areas, and other parts of a dental arch, okay? This definition is according to Rosenstiel, okay? That is the standard textbook, textbook of FPD. Coming to the Definition of a dye. Dye is a positive reproduction of a prepared teeth and consists of suitable hard substance of sufficient accuracy. Okay, so that is improved stone, metal, or resin. Okay, so basically, this individual structure is known as a dye. Requirement of a working dye. So uh, sorry, working cast. So as a whole, the whole cast should be able to reproduce both prepared and unprepared tooth surfaces, right? Should be able to at least show us an unprepared teeth adjacent to preparation must be free of voids, okay? So the dye must be, the working cast should be poured properly and the dye should be clearly visible. The um, the finish lines and all the structure should be the prepared tooth should be properly visible. So if you take a good impression, the whole thing will be reproduced properly. The anterior teeth involved in anterior guidance and occlusal surface of all teeth should allow precise articulation with the opposing teeth. So again, these things will be achieved only if you take a proper impression and you reproduce a proper cast. Okay, so then you'll be able to incise it, you'll be able to occlude it if required to be occluded with the opposing arch occlusion. The relevant uh, soft tissue should be covered, including the edentulous spaces and contours of the residual ridge that will be involved in the fixed partial denture. So everything should be taken into account, okay? the unprepared teeth, any structures which are there, any abnormalities with the other teeth, anything. So usually, yes, we do prosthodontics at the end of all the treatments. So basically, all the teeth should be restored before doing this, okay? So even though anything is there, it has to be completely Requirements of a dye preparation. So this is an individual structure is known as a dye, okay? All surfaces must be accurately duplicated and no bubbles or voids should be accepted. So you have to apply proper pouring techniques, okay? All the details of prepared tooth should be reproduced. The unprepared tooth surface immediately cervical to finish line should be accurately produced in order to allow the technicians to prepare accurate finish line in wax patterns okay so we do contouring of the dye which i'll be talking about you see there is no contour here uh, below the finish line so a lab technician can see the finish line properly and a proper dye can be formed okay we do it for that reason accurate access to margins are necessary okay so everything should look clear and should be visible okay all right, coming to basic requirements of dye materials, it should have accuracy and dimensional stability. It should have smooth, hard surface, which should not easily abrade. It should be compatible with impression material. It should have high strength. There should be a color contrast. It has to be economical. 
should be able to manipulate easily and fast, sh uh, should have ability to reproduce fine details and sharp margins, okay? So these are the requirements of the dye materials which we are using, okay? So dye materials which are used for fabrication, there are many dye materials which we use. So gypsum products, type 4, type 5 dye, dye vestments, also amalgam used for making dyes, cements, okay, that is the silicophosphate cements, polymers are used, epoxy resins, self-curing acrylics, um, electrodeposition of metals are also used as a copper plated, silver plated, uh, metal sprayed dyes, flexible dye materials, free materials for dye preparation, okay, so all these are used, commonly used are the gypsum products, okay. Coming to dye systems. So, <clears throat> a working cast with a separate dye and a working cast with a removable dye. Okay, so basically, um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, so we can separate it out, and uh, usually we have systems which consist of dyes which can come out in the hand and it can be prepared even easily, guys. Okay, so working cast with a separate dye. So two casts are poured from a single impression and one cast is sectioned and used as a die. The other is not sectioned and <clears throat> is used as a working cast. Okay, so you have two models. One is a working cast and one is for the die preparation. So you can separate it. The wax pattern is prepared on the die and later transferred to the working cast. Okay, so in a removable die, you can remove the dye, make a wax pattern, you can put it back in the cast, okay? Or pouring an elastomeric full arch impression twice first cast is used for fabrication of a dye, okay? So either you pour the impression two times and then you do it, or you, uh, you know, uh, make a dye and then you make another dye. Okay, it's the same thing. Make an, we make a cast and then you make another cast with dye and without the dye. Advantage, advantage and disadvantage of uh, this technique is it is simple, slightly more accurate, easy to obtain, contours, intact gingiva, no special equipment required, no error of, of seeding. Okay, disadvantage is the wax pattern may get distorted while transferring, yes. It from the die to the cast, proximal margins tend to get over controlled sometimes, okay? So how do we prepare a die? So a die for, is first trimmed on the model, okay? So if you have a small model or if you, you want to take only one section of the model, you trim it in the trimmer. <clears throat> in the second picture, you see a properly trimmed die handle is slightly larger in diameter than the preparation. This is known as a die handle. This is the prepared teeth. This is the margin. Okay. And this is the handle. Okay. This is the contour which we do. And this is the prepared tooth and that is the margin. Okay. So it has to be one inch long. A die is trimmed with an acrylic bur to form contour. So this is what they're doing now. So it is trimmed. This is just so that the margin is clearly visible. Okay. After that, the preparation finish line is marked with a red color pencil. So it is clearly visible. You can see this is the margin. And then the die hardener is coated on the die. Okay. So um, it can be a uh, die hardening agent, cyanoacrylate or acrylic resin liqueur can be applied to the finish line area of the die to prevent abrasion by wax instruments during the fabrication of the wax pattern, okay? So we're gonna pre preserve it as, as it is. Advantages is it is simplest means of fabricating a working cast. It also keeps the relationship of abutment fixed and immovable. This method is more accurately accurate as it allows the orienting the preparation model to each other which is considered important step in minimizing cost adjustment. So it can be oriented back and, uh, you know, it will actually minimize also the error margin, which is present at the end. 
Uh, gingival tissue and other landmarks are also intact. It's easier to obtain the physiological harmony, restoration, contours, when uh, fabrication of wax patterns. Okay. So the disadvantage is, is that it pre it, the procedure is a little difficult. Yes, you can encounter pure, poorly seating dyes and dolls. Yes, that happens sometimes. Difficulty in sawing the dye out of the cast. Yes, it is. Uh, interproximal margins can easily be damaged. Um, um, not really, but yes, uh, sometimes if you're not careful, it happens. Okay, so requirements of a removal dye system. Okay, so we will be coming to the removal dye systems, guys. Okay, so first of all, talking about the requirements. So before we are talking about the dyes which were fixed, okay, which we were not able to remove. The dyes must return to their exact original position the dye must remain stable even when inverted the cast containing the dyes must easily be able to mount on an arm okay so working cast with the removable dye guys okay so we have a pre-pour and a post-pour technique so in pre-pour what do you do is um during the pouring you put the double pins inside you call these doll pins and you are secured by pins and uh, uh, clips okay and then you pour one layer you put a separating media and then you put uh, pour another layer here you make holes you put the doll pin in one layer and then you put maybe a plastic sleeve or wax put a separating media and then you pour another layer and then you do sewing the uh, dye okay so first coming to the pre-pour most of these devices can be oriented in the impression before it is even poured post-pour technique is attached to the underside of the cast that's already been poured guys okay so now presenting you the four important systems guys this is important okay straight double pin curved double pin pindex system and dialogue system okay so in double pin you also have like a bifurcated bi pin system so this is a single pin this is a curved pin here you can have one head and two bifurcations okay i will show you in the slides know this guys straight double pin this is a, just a straight double pin okay which is attached on the die so this is the first pour, this is the second pour, you have separated, put a separating media, put a sleeve, okay, this goes in the cast, this is visible, you can put a wax down or a sleeve and you can take it out, contour and put it back, okay, this is straight, that's why it's known as a straight doll pin, okay, so doll pins are positioned over the impressions by bobby pins basically, so yes, we secured by a pin, we put some um, uh, clips, sharp clips, and we secured, and then we can pour the one layer, and then safely remove this, put a sep pour a sep uh, after it sets, you clean a separating media, and you pour one more layer, guys, okay? And yes, you have to put a little bit of wax under this area, okay? So it's easier. Paper clips are added to non-removable parts okay like this okay the non-removable just to give it more retention and strength for the second pour guys okay so it's like making retention glue okay the stone around the doll pins are lubricated the a filter is placed in the lingual surface and base is poured okay so now we are painting the spacer or uh, separating media when it when it is set base is trimmed to remove the axis, okay? And you can see that a wax is um, put at the end, okay? Wax at the end of the doll pins are located and removed, all right? So after pouring, you can see that sometimes you're able to see um, the wax hanging out, so, or you leave it like that. So you just take it out and then you can just push it out but it's not going to come out now, guys. You have to saw it, okay? You have to section the cast, okay? Yeah, there you go. So, dyes are separated from the rest of the cast with the fine saw. So, this is an instrument which we use, guys, okay? So, there's a very thin, small saw, and you section the pontic and the abutment area, okay? 
yeah till the first base okay and you can see when you pour it into two different colors you'll be able to happily appreciate it guys okay i mean evidently yeah sorry so you can just saw it out and then it should be easily able to be taken okay all right after the dies have been separated from the cast the ends of the doll are uh taped to loosen the die from the cast okay so you can just um tap it and it'll just come out guys as a die in separate so it'll come out as one two three parts okay all right yeah okay so now you when you have a single die coming out you can trim below the margin to avoid possible damage to the margin so that's why you do the contouring okay all right yeah and then you mark it with the red pencil so going back to our previous slides which i covered yeah with an acrylic timber okay so die are reseated into the cast one two three guys this is you can just push it up okay coming to the pre-pour technique guys so in short this is known as a doll pin right guys so doll pin is positioned within the impression using a sticky wax um first pour is poured up to the level of the alveolar ridge separating media is applied after the cast is set the die is sectioned okay so second pour separating media in the middle after the cast set the cast is set the uh, dies are sectioned by placing vertical sections in the interproximal region using a die sectioner since the separating media was applied before pouring the second half of the cast the dies can be easily separated with the vertical section alone okay so don't worry it can come out easily after you section it guys okay coming to curved dolphin so just now we covered straight dolphins and a pre-pour technique okay so this is just curved that's the difference guys this will be like coming out of the model <laughs> yeah it's funny but that's how it looks curved dolls will can be incorporated into a working cast by fixing the dolls uh, to the impression before it is poured uh, or by cementing the dolls into um, holes drilled in a previously poured cast okay so either it can be uh, used in a pre-pour or a post-pour okay all right yeah uh, this is like a cross section guys showing a curved doll to the impression that is like the pre-pour method okay so this is an impression okay first pour impression this is a curved uh doll pin okay so <clears throat> just remember that this stone is poured covering the heads of the doll doll and around one to two mm of the body of the doll okay also the body all right so you also have to place a positioning bar here just to make it straight because it's a curved thing right so it's a little more difficult to orient then you place these uh, pins okay and then you can uh, do a pre-pour technique so depressions are made about 2.5 mm deep on either side of the dolls uh in the two large segments okay so one two three four so at least two mm deep and you have to separate it into two okay of the cast that will carry the unprepared teeth okay and then the broken lines indicate where the cast has to be sectioned guys okay so just for stability and for anchorage um for retention you're making these big holes okay all right so you can pour it and have that fixture in the second pour and you can see these are coming out it's like seriously coming out okay when you box the impression they're kind of piercing out they're curved yeah then layer of petroleum or any of the separating media is applied on the stone and the doll yeah here very clear right and then you box the first impression and then you pour the second impression on top okay so boxing wax is placed around the impression with the tips of the doll sticking through because they are curved you know they have no place to go they have to stick out 
the complete cast is a uh, sword again okay so again you use a saw and you have to cut and section one two three four okay a segment is removed by pressing on the exposed tip of the so it's really easy here it's a little bit more easy but yes the orientation is a little difficult so you just have to push it out from outside then pressure you can see it's going to just jump out like that yeah all right coming to the pindex system guys so pindex system is um system a reverse drill system is used to create a master cast with dies that can be removed and replaced repeatedly with greater precision okay so this is the one of the best systems which we use we used to uh, i used it yes guys so and usually used so the impression is poured without positioning and attaching dolphins beforehand the machine accurately dill drills parallel holes from the underside of the trimmed cast so this is the biggest difference here okay so now um you'll see how we do it okay uh so the cast pour allows to set allowed to set and the cast trimmed on the model okay we pour the whole uh we pour the impression normally at least it should be like um you know it should have a height proper height and then it is trimmed nicely okay and yes you have to cut out even the palette if it's there okay lingual surface everything okay so at least after trimming it has to be at least 15 mm okay so cast should be at least 15 mm thick thick from the cervical portion of the teeth and the periphery of the cast is trimmed on the model trimmer okay everything this is the lathe and it's trimmed nicely don't trim on the teeth okay all right it has to have that much space, guys the palate and the tongue area is trimmed out also guys okay made space okay so this is the main uh, machine which is used okay so this is a pindex system um it's a machine which uses um uh, like this is the light beam director guys okay so light exactly like my pointer right you see my laser pointer exactly the beam looks like that and you can see it on the cast okay and then you just you just have to push it this platform is a working table okay here it has a small drill hole okay there is a handle bar down okay and of course below there is a motor housing it can look as a round or in a square form a rectangle like a square form or a round form you just have to push it okay so like a sprint it will just go down and the light will direct and will go down and it's going to pierce hole under the prepared teeth okay so you can uh, place uh, two holes here. If like like it, in my time, I used to use a bi pin, okay, with one head, okay. So one two, one two, one two, okay. Otherwise, one two three, okay, like that. So this is the main system used in the Pendex, which makes it different from all the others. The accuracy, yes, guys there you go you can see right the light beam and you just have to push it okay yeah there so in short if you see it look like the light beams will look one two one two one two okay on both the crucial surfaces guys okay pontic and the abutment areas guys okay prepare to this place under the illuminated dot and the thumb used to stabilize the cast and you just press through it's like a spring and under the cast it'll make holes now that those are the holes which are drilled when you turn it around you see the debris are removed from the pinhole and the pin holes are refined with the hand reamer or just brushed out okay and you can see so if you're using like a by pin guys so by pin has one two and like a big head okay so it, it's like a bifurcated head with one big head okay bifurcated pin so that's what i used to use in my times so and for the stability you have to put it in other places as well guys okay all right but you'll be only sectioning and removing this portion yeah now what you have to do you have to put cyanoacrylate cement is placed on the pins prior to cementing it tips otherwise it's gonna just come out guys yeah so 
that tip has to be secured properly and the shorter pins will go first so one will usually be shorter than the other one okay and it will also have like a small sleeve you can see these are the sleeves guys yeah yeah these are the sleeves which are placed so it's for easy move yeah so you don't have to place wax so sleeves are placed on the pins and the bottom of the cast is lightly coated with a petroleum jelly or any or separating media okay all right so here and then you can go ahead put it in a base form and just for a layer of base yeah okay the ends of the short pins are blocked with wax okay so uh, even after putting the sleeve guys um there could be a little bit hole exactly where i'm pointing right now from my laser pointer so there you need to fill in a little bit of wax and utility wax is placed on the ends of the long pins, all right? You don't need to put such a big uh, chunk. You can just put a little bit, yeah. The palette or tongue fillers are made of boxing wax and boxed around the castle. Okay, so you can just maybe box the wax. That's also okay because if you use a... Uh, base form it might be too thin so you can just box the impression and then pour another base okay the second pour all right guys so this is the um boxing impression the stone is vibrated around the base of the pins and the base former is filled with stone and the cast is seated in the base former okay so once you have a proper base, if you still want it placed in a base former, you can also put it in the base former and just place it. But if the base form is not deep enough, you can just box the impression and pour it evenly. All right? But yes, it should be without bubbles, guys. So here. So first you can just uh, put a little bit of material here and then you pour it on top. So first securing these by the cement, okay? And you can see these wax chunks. Yeah, sleeves and the wax. Okay, now again cutting, coming to die sectioning. So this will remain the same, guys, for all the procedures. The saw cuts are pre-marked with pencil and then sectioned. So you can just happily mark it. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and just cut it. So you can see they are separated by two colors. A large condenser can be used to loosen the die. So you can just, you know, push the dies up. Okay, you'll be able to see at the end of the pour, uh, there will be like wax sticking. So you can, you you know that that is the end of the second pour. So you can just push that wax and the dye will come out. Okay. Okay, coming to the last system, that is a dye lock tray system. This is a very advanced system. A snap apart plastic tray with internal orienting grooves, notches can also be used to reassemble the working cast and dies okay so it's already sectioned guys and it is plain advantage of a dialogue system dialoguing system is extremely accurate it has reusable trays no pins are required impression is poured once disadvantage advantage is that yes it is time consuming um must cast trimming to accommodate wide r so yes cast trimming is required index are small and can fracture guys that's how you do it. You just uh, pour the impression, okay, all right? And you place it on top of um, the space, all right? And this is how it looks like, guys. You tap it. And, uh, but still you need to saw the whole thing, right? Wherever required, guys. So you have to do sectioning, sawing of it, and you can separate the dies like that, right? Okay. And that's how it looks like. So uh, this is like a detachable tray which is present, okay? You just section it and you just take it out. Everything will be sectioned and you can put it back together like that. So that is how it looks like, yeah? You can just section it out and put it back, guys. So it's like a section tray. But yes, you do have to section it wherever required. Like here, it's like a full mouth rehab case, I guess all the teeth have been prepared okay so usually it makes more sense to use um the system for, for a mo full mouth case as uh, you have done uh, tooth preparation for all the teeth and then only it makes sense it doesn't really make sense to do it for two or three teeth yeah so all that 
that system works. Okay, so summarizing. So you should be able to differentiate between working cost and dye, dye materials, dye preparations, working cost with separate dye, working cost with removable dyes, and the dye systems which we use. Straight dolphin, curved dolphin, pindex system, and dialogue system. Okay, guys, thank you so much for patient listening. The standard textbooks remain Rosenstiel and Schillenberg for FPD guys. Please refer to them, refer to these this presentation, refer to notes. Um, for any questions, I'm available on, in the Polyclinic 3 in the Prosto department. Please come and ask questions if you have any. Thank you.